Hello everybody, good evening, uh, welcome to Railfan TV uh, and Train Sim World 2. Uh, I'm JD, I'm joined as ever by Matt. Hello Matt, how's it going? I'm doing well, that's it, I just realised my chroma wasn't set up, it now is. Yeah, uh, I don't unfortunately have a chroma so you've got a view of my garage. <laughs> no one wants to see my garage. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm doing very well, thank you. Good, good. And we are excited tonight. Um, I always seem to get the German preview streams, which is great because you get to hear me try and pronounce German words, everybody. Uh, but also because we are doing Tarandarampa tonight. Uh, so again, any Germans currently listening, I apologize when I'm butchering your mother tongues. But we're going to try and do our best to uh, present Tarandarampa and all of the different... Uh, all of the different bits and pieces that, that we will be talking about over the course of the uh, the stream tonight. Um, I'm very excited for this one. Um, you've done a preview with me, Matt, and uh, I must admit I was looking through it and I was thinking this looks great. So I hope everybody else feels the same coming out of this live stream. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, and, uh, the other thing is I'm on PlayStation 5. Yes. Uh, have we done many play PS5 streams, preview streams? I've not done one with you, I don't think. But uh, a have few. We a few. Not yeah. enough, essentially, is the answer to that. But yeah, this is PlayStation 5. Ooh, hello. Achievements. Lovely. There we go, just to prove it. Uh, we're going to be doing tonight, we're going to be doing a service between uh, Dresden and Chemnitz on the DBBR 612. Uh, we're going to be showcasing the BR 185.6 with the rail, uh, rail pool livery. Uh, so we're going to be showing that off to you as well, just to show you all the little nuts and bolts. We're going to try and answer as many of your questions as we possibly can do um, <coughs> for release, which is next week, uh, as we announced earlier today there is an article on the uh the website which details a little bit more about the route but hopefully we'll be able to give you a uh a first hand look of it in action today rather than some screenshots so matt what are we going to be driving today do you want to take us through we're going to uh, uh, so let's have a quick tour of the uh, what's in the product first and then we're going to start off and we're going to drive the 612 because tilting fun um, I'm a little hyped. I love this, this thing. It's brilliant. Uh, so the, you've got the route introduction. You've got the tutorials. So there's a, a number of bits of stock included in the packs. So the 612, the 143, the cab car, uh, 185.6, the rail pool, and the 363 uh, shunter. Uh, it's the blue one. It's the, exactly the same as the one that's in Dresden. But we wanted to put it into here so that it could be used for um, a few bits and pieces uh, around the... Uh, yeah, let's turn the cameras off. Uh, so it can be used for a few bits and pieces um, around the uh, around the various uh, route and so forth. So um, that was, enables us to do that. Scenarios: uh, there are six. Um, so you've got the fast slide Freiburg, uh, Freiburg. Uh, you've got the double header freight one, uh, cut and shunt. So this is one with the three six three uh, traffic jam. Look at that tilt! Oh, look at that tilt! Uh, that is got... fine tilting. Better late than never, and thundering through. So there's a uh, nice range of uh, of scenarios to go on that one. I think the reason the six rather than five, because again the three six three bulked it up to a sixth one, uh, which is uh, which is cool. Timetable wise, uh, it's about 200 playable services. You saw on the front there, it said 196. Six one two has 10 services, which sounds a little low, but it's how many it has in real life. So it runs the IRE uh, services, IRE one. Um, uh, on there, which run the full length of the line and their uh, express. Um, then you've got the rail pool 185, um, which you may have seen before in an earlier stream, possibly. Um, <laughs> and that one's got um, from freight services uh, from various points to various points uh, on the uh, uh, on the line. Then you've got the switcher, uh, the shunter, sorry, seven shunting services. 143 has 74, and the cab car obviously has equivalent of return journeys. Uh, on there, and they uh, they run generally the uh, S Bahn S3 and the uh, RB30 services. So um, they're generally going to be your stopping services. And even though they're running on the same route, um, sorry, Mata, that's a good point. I've not installed anything but this uh, because installing routes on my on a dev kit is a bit of a pain in the backside. So I've only got the base stuff on here, but everything playable is available in the base. The layers only add AI traffic and they really only add AI traffic to Dresden because of the stuff going in the other direction. So if you've got no extra layers or if you're on Gen 8, um, then you still get all the playable services. Um, so well, you're not losing anything there what, what, except for the AI traffic. So that's uh, uh, just a Joe timetable. Uh, so he said it's the Intercity BR101, the, uh, the BR101 running the EC train and then there's the ICE BR403. And again, these you'll only see these around Dresden. So all the playable services are available in the base. 
so all good and we have enlisted Joe's help today with some of the questions. Uh, he has been beavering away, giving us some of the answers uh, for particularly the timetable questions, which, uh, as we know, he is the timetable master. So thank you, Joe. Um, uh, quick so, question. Uh, Matt, sorry, BR182. So the BR182 is used as one of the AI trains. You get the MRCE182 running some of the EC services, and then it does a swap between the BR101 and the uh, BR182. But it's just, again, something you can see. I don't think there's anything playable there. It's just something you see because they, they run on the, the route that's not on Dresden Chemnitz, essentially. Yeah, and L just a couple of follow-up questions from that. The, um, LI150 Special says uh, there'll be no AI uh, on Gen 8, additional AI on Gen 8. Uh, I believe that's that's right. I, th I, I think, Matt, you were saying there was minimal um, it's the, it's only AI around the Dresden area, so it's extra trains yeah. you'll see in Dresden Station or departing Dresden Station going up the Resolute route, essentially. Um, uh, whereas, uh, so all the AI for the Chemnitz route is present, um, but yeah, AI around Dresden going along in other directions, uh, you won't see. Those are the ones that are in extra layers. Cool. And Antcraft asked, will the 612 layer onto other routes at this time? I think we had this question anyway at some point later no, on, but we might as well answer moment. it now. I'm not sure where what other routes it goes on at this point. So um, uh, you can use it, obviously, in Scenario Designer, anywhere you like. That's the usual answer on that one. But there's no layers adding the 612 specifically. And we don't have a two-car DMU for it to auto-substitute in and in any of the routes at the moment. So there's it would have to be new layers crafted to add that stuff. Um, so uh, I must admit I'm going to be keen to look into what other routes the 612 have we've got that it could run on. I don't know if there are any to be honest, because um, but uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to look into it. But if you want to run it, then use Scenario Designer. You can uh, you can you can fill your boots. Yeah, and uh, Renface asked, Does, uh, will this train be available to pre-order? I believe it is available to pre-order on Steam. Um, I'm not sure on the other platforms. Uh, I believe it's 10% discount on Steam. Um, I'm not sure on consoles, have to be have to be honest. But if you go onto the uh, Train Sim World 2 page, you should be able to find out pretty easily. Right, so here we are in the cab of the 612, sitting here at Dresden Station, just waiting for it to finish loading. Uh, the, yeah, there we go, it's loaded. So the first thing we're going to do is step up, and we are going to uh, have a wander around to uh, the middle here. Um, and this is where your your switches and fuses are down in here. There's no room for them in the, in the cab, it's only a tiny little cab, so that's CIFA, PZB, and GNT. We will be talking much about GNT, which is... I can't is, wait to try and pronounce it. Uh, well, you know, it's, I'm, I'm just going to apologise in advance for JD pronouncing that, what GNT stands for. <laughs> um, so we sit down, and uh, now that we've sat down, I'm going to uh, put the reverser in, and put it forward, so we've got the cabin control. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on, lots more acronyms here, GST, which is TILT. Now, I'm just going to look outside, just keep an eye on the horizon, because when you turn on GST, the train tilts, and it does a self-test of the tilting system, which is immensely cool. Ooh, uh, if I look at it from go. the outside... So it does this little self-test of the of the tilt system, which is uh, I don't know that tickles me quite hard. It has to be said, I like I really like that. First time I saw it, I was um, I must admit I got a little bit queasy because I wasn't expecting. It. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? The world's moving. But um, no, it's a fully realistic thing that it actually does. Uh, door controls are down here. Oh, you can just use D-pad right. But otherwise than that, you switch it to Rex and then click the open button. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to get the brake uh, switch in. On it gives us control over the brakes. A little bit more brake control on. So we have got headlights that need setting, which is this switch over here. And I think we're just about set up now, actually. This left screen here is your engine output, so this will tell you what you're doing with either the hydrodynamic brakes or with the throttle, hence Farron or Bremsen. That will highlight which one, whether Farron is go, Bremsen is stop, um, and you'll see the uh, the pink. Uh, pink purple line there goes up and down with it's like a target value that you're setting and then you can see the blue bars filling up as you as it uh, operates them uh, and then on the right hand side here you would normally have a booler uh, but there's no booler we haven't done a booler yet but you kind of need a booler to be able to use GNT properly so we've come up with a bit of a compromise um, until we can get GN uh, a booler figured out at some point 
Um, yeah, we'll show that. We'll show that, won't we? When it when it comes to it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So lock the doors and uh, let's go. Yeah, worth noting before we depart Dresden Station that this is not the Dresden of the Riesa Dresden route. This is a slightly different Dresden Station. Um, yes, yes. And for those who have read the article that we re released earlier, you know that this is set slightly earlier in time than the Riesa Dresden. Sorry, the, the Dresden of Riesa Dresden, uh, Tarandarampa one, is slightly earlier in time. So you might see a few differences. Oh, I forgot to turn the power on. So you've got to <laughs> you've got to turn on the uh, on the because this is hydraulic, hydraulic. You've got to actually apply power to the uh, fluid coupling. So uh, there we go. Now driving this is very similar to the G6. If you've recently got the uh, the G6, um, then uh, um, then happy days. You, you're pretty much familiar with the 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 way that the throttle works. And it's like it's a, uh, a a make more power, put it back to hold power type thing. So it's on two at the minute. If I push it forward a bit and hold it, you see the percentage is going up. Release it and it pops back to 37. So. Uh, PZB is on and uh, we're going. So GNT is switched is actually disabled at the minute. Even though it's switched on as an on-train system, it hasn't been turned on and it gets turned on automatically by uh, Belize in the track, um, which you'll see in just a minute. Right, I'm just going to cut the power. Uh, you can see here that how the uh, the blue bar is moving on there. So if you keep an eye on that left screen, you can see what's going on with the uh, the engine. Um, GNT is not supported or is not delivered in station areas because it's incredibly complicated. Um, and um, uh, and this is in reality, sorry. Um, <coughs> the um, uh, but then so it kicks in, I think, around here somewhere. I think is where it'll kick in southbound. And then from Chemnitz end, I think it kicks in around here somewhere, or kicks out in the other direction. As you showed the map, Matt, you, you can see it is lovely and windy, and yeah. I mean you can't see it from this, but it's there are some steep gradients. It's perfect for a tilting train. We'll come on to why there is the tilting train in the in the in, uh, in a little bit when we kind of get to see it in action. Um, but uh, worth noting at this point that um, as we have done with the last couple of of, of German based routes, um, we've had a little bit of extra help with some of these. Um, yes. The, uh, do you want to give a few shout outs, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. So first up to uh, Lucas, um, who did all the track and signaling for this route, uh, same as Lucas did for Dresden, uh, Risa. Um, and uh, Mike from Trains of Germany, TSG, that did the G6 uh, release recently. And it's helped us on a number of projects in the past, such as the ICA3, um, uh, did the setup on the 612. Cool. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, so setup and audio. Uh, it's 49 miles to 79 kilometers this route. Uh, I think it, about end to end it's about an hour, isn't it? I think we were seeing a lot of the services were about an hour. Um, so, uh, but there's there's quite a lot of um, variation. I think you were describing it, Matt, as it's one of those things that you can't really take your eye off of and, and do the the out of cam views too often because you'll find something is uh, is not quite right and you've got to stay quite alert with it. Yeah, absolutely. It's this is this route twists, turns, the speed limits change all over the shop, um, and um, yeah, it's it's quite a challenge um, to do. If you I mean obviously, if you're just driving casually, you can make it as much of a challenge as you wanted to. But if you want to actually try and nail the speed limits correctly, you're going to be speeding up and slowing down all over the place. Um, and with the uh, the tickets two and a half percent on the ramp itself, which is from Tarant to Klingenberg, I think, um, which is kind of the feature gradient uh, on the route, which is really quite steep. I mean, this thing even if oh GNT just activated, so you can see that the GNT information has just appeared on the right hand side, and that's telling me that my GNT speed limit currently is 80 kilometres an hour, and the next speed limit is 90. Now what you'll find is that um, when we um, when we go along here, the speed limits that you see on the boards will not match up with what you are seeing in the cab. And that's because if GNT is enabled, the purpose of GNT, because I've got, I'm a tilting train, I can go a bit faster. So you can break the speed limit essentially with this train and GNT is controlling how much more you can break the speed limit and making sure that can happen. Um, so uh, we've got 800 meters until the 90. 
So the IRE One services, you'll see my next stop is at Freiburg Saxe. They don't stop at very many places. Um, you'll want the S-Bahn services with the 143 to do that. Now, the, the fun thing with the 143 is, of course, it doesn't have the tilting stuff, which means it doesn't have the faster speeds. So actually, the route pace is quite different because you're driving it at a different speed. Um, the HUD will keep up with that. So you'll see that it says on the HUD my next speed limit is 90. If I was in a 143, it would be saying my next speed limit probably is 80. Uh, and we'll see that as we come up to the board in a minute, you'll see that it's probably an 8 board, uh, even though I'm being told I can go 90. Yeah, so, so in theory, well, not in theory, in practice, if you're going headless, you are supported by um, that you'll kind see of... It's an 8 board, and actually I'm allowed to go 90, but that's because I've got the toys. Um, but yeah, you, in that kind of a Boogler style system, uh, you can you can you might have to crane your neck and look in a little bit on occasion, but you should be able to go hudless if if you would like. That's why we made sure we put that there because without that you can't drive hudless. Yeah. Because it's not always 10 kilometres above or 20 kilometres above. It does vary. Um, so you can see that was a 10 limit, and actually we we we're going to get 110 uh, on that. So there you go. It's just gone up to 110. So it's um, you know that's why that's there so that you can um, uh, so that you can do that. Okay, I think I think we've had enough requests in the chat now. I think it's horn time, Matt. There we go. I'm assuming you're done. I can, I can, I can, stuff. Yeah, I can't I can't hear it uh, on, on my PC, but I'm hoping that you're everyone's done, everyone's happy. There we go. A lot of wows and nices in the chat. That's good. There's a couple of people saying the audio quality is a bit off. There's not much I can do about that right now. I'm going to have to review it after the stream and find out why. It sounds fine in my headphones, um, but um, if it's not capturing properly for the... Uh, it may be just over-boosting it, because it does look like it's going into the yellow, actually. I, mean. uh, I will say as well, while, while Matt takes a look at that, GNT. Okay, this is my, this is my moment to, to butcher. Uh, and this is classic German compound word. Is uh, it stands for Geschwindigkeit super uh, mega technique, uh, and that's two words uh, of very many letters. So uh, I hope I did that justice. Uh, but it's uh, I did a little Wikipedia of it earlier, and actually it's the um, general speed limit system or something. They use it on speed cameras and things like that on the roads as well. Um, so uh, yeah, it's to do with the, the limits. Good view. Pouring some more power on now. So uh, a couple of other uh, little wrinkles. Um, uh, one of them is that so when GNT is enabled, as it was on this train, um, um, you will find that speed control magnets. So what the, the GPA magnets, um, the ones that trip all of us up because we're not expecting them, um, aren't applied. Um, so they, they don't matter, and that's because they're, they're set for the lower speeds and you're allowed to go faster. So, um, so uh, yeah, when you've got GNT, the, the GPA speed uh, magnets are effectively disabled. What there is is there's another Belize in the middle of the track which tells the train, you can ignore this thing that's coming up, it's fine. Um, but obviously the usual rules for anything 70 kilometers an hour below and below apply. So if you get like a six triangle board come up as we will shortly, they still apply, all the usual rules still apply. Uh, PZB is still there and it still will get grumpy with you for the usual reasons. Can't wait for the four up challenge with this one. <laughs> <coughs> Hudless four up challenge. Yeah. Oh my word. I'm going to tap out of that one straight away. Um, a few people have mentioned the scenery. Yes, we haven't talked about the actual kind of route itself too much yet. Um, but this is a lot more of a kind of provincial countryside route than perhaps what you might expect with, or what you might have expected with um, Risa Dresden. This is more of a, yeah. a, a kind of a countryside thing where you can see a lot more trees, a lot more greenery. Um, so again, if you're if you're if you're in your if you if you like your scenic routes, this is one that um, I think you can kind of lose yourself in to a certain extent. Yeah, very much so. This is definitely the scenic route, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Right, GNT has just told me that I'm approaching the speed curve for this 110. The flash means I'm on the speed curve. 
and I need to slow down. So again, GNT is trying to monitor, manage my speed, help me manage my speed here. Um, so you do get cab indications and you'll see them represented on the HUD as well. So that's essentially what that's trying to tell me is that's giving me the warning that I need to slow down. Because if, if you're not, because you're driving and you're not obeying the speed boards, it's kind of an extra reminder that there's these extra things going on that you need to uh, be paying attention to, which is quite good. You also get um, a warning if you exceed the speed limit. So you get an audible warning at three kilometers an hour. The light comes on at six, the brakes come on at 10 above the speed limit. A couple of questions earlier on about the X on the left hand side of your dashboard. That uh, thing, it looks that... like a holder for something. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I thought it looked like a holder. I'm tempted to say mobile phone hold, but that feels highly unlikely. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what it. Uh, yeah, um, so maybe someone in the chat has has uh, an idea, but um, a few people were asking. So obviously it's not just us. Um, some people, yeah, said cell phone and uh, a couple of other bits and pieces. But um, a few, I, I think there have been a few questions about night lighting. So um, it might be worth once we've done this, uh, so we've done this pass um, map, taking a quick look at this at night. Um, Sort of yep. five five minutes or so, just to kind of show what it looks like. I saw a few people um, comment it on the when they saw the screenshots. Um, before we kind of get to that, in terms of the night lighting and the way that the night lighting's been approached, obviously the kind of the last German route was Ries Dresden, which there was a lot of work that went into making sure that kind of night lighting looked pretty spectacular. Mm. Um, with this particular route, has that amount of uh, kind of attention been given to not to the same level no it is not the same as Dresden Reser but the team have um, tried to uh, do more than perhaps would normally be done so it's better than um, it might normally be right so this is a six I've got to acknowledge this um, there you go um, but it's not to the level of Dresden Reser um, so better than previously it might have been but not to the level of Dresden Reser um, Rush hour passengers? I yes. don't think so. Oh yes, okay. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't 100% sure myself. So the uh, before the stream, I, I, I opened up all the config files, and it's got rush hour volumes, it's got rush hour passenger types, and it's got the temperature curve set up correctly for it. So it should be pretty much set up the same way that the. Uh, it looks like it was a lot of the setup copied from Dresden, so it should be it should be solid. Lovely. Well, that's a nice, pleasant surprise. I wasn't expecting that. So I'm glad that we asked that question. Um, so that should be active from release as well uh, and there will be achievements on this route as well i know that obviously we, we mentioned that for each update we would talk about whether there would be achievements i believe there are on on this route for all platforms yeah we, we should have achievements yeah cool um working level crossings from my life as isaac oh uh, when i say yes but i must admit i've not looked and seen myself for that so okay for... let's see as we go yeah, we'll come back to that one. Uh, will there be a tutorial for GNT? Uh, I'm not sure actually. There isn't I a tutorial. Do I don't no. think I've not run the six one two tutorial six one two tutorial to see what it covers. I did record the VO for it, and I don't recall that coming up in the script. So no. Um, but by and large, GNT is not complicated. Um, follow the speeds on the right hand screen, and it should never bother you. You don't have to acknowledge anything with GNT, which is quite nice. Um, you just have to uh, follow the speed limits. Cab light is one of these ones over here. There it is. Ta da! Collectibles. Any hint, or do we want to keep some of those a little bit under wraps? Um, there's the usual round of collectibles. I think I saw gnomes on the front screen. Um, nice. In the list of collectibles, I can't remember what the others are. Um, but uh, yes, definitely collectibles. Wonderful. John okay. from Rodon, is GNT adjusted dynamically for signal restrictions? I'm going to have to defer to Lucas on that one. I don't know the answer to that. Okay, uh, we'll come back. So there's a few questions about stock that comes with it. What else subs in? We'll reiterate that towards the end of the stream. We've talked about it at the start of the stream. So um, if you are, uh, we went into quite a lot of detail. If you want to find out a little bit more about that, you can watch the start first five minutes or so we go into that. Um, however, we will talk about that at the end as well, um, because there are quite a, there's quite a few. Right, we just got the thousand hertz coming up for another 60 restrictions. So I'm slowing down for that. OK, 
Okay, we asked you guys for some questions. I'm going to go through some of those um, that we have got from the forums. Uh, Will, so this is from Rob Skip. Will the tilt only work on lines that are ZUB262 fitted as per reality, or will it be active everywhere? We looked at that and we honestly thought it would be more fun for tilt to be available everywhere. So normally tilt is the GST and GNT systems are interlocked. So you can't turn on tilt if you haven't turned on GNT. Uh, but in this case, GNT, uh, if you, tilt is just turned on and off with this switch here. Um, so if you want to, you know, run it without tilt, then you can do that. Um, but um, the um, uh, so if you want to run it on a different route, um, you can um, you can certainly turn on the GST on Munich Augsburg, for example, or um, Main Spessarbahn or Southeastern High Speed, as somebody else suggested. Um, so you can um, yeah you can put you can use the tilt anyway. Like that's not 100% realistic, but we felt it meant that you could enjoy the route that the low the train you know to its fullest on a wider range of routes. Awesome. Uh, Transport Maurice asked if we can open the window to hear some of the exterior sounds. Possible? I think there's a few requests for that actually. Uh, so um, the accelerator, uh, Russian Doge asked the accelerator handle like the Voslo, or sorry, the G6. I assume yeah. we, we said at the start it's very the, the controls Drive, driving this is very you. similar to driving the G6. Yeah. yeah. Um, how long is the route? I think we've said this before. 49 miles, 79 kilometres. Will there be livery designer? Yes. I so. Yeah. Yes. Um, do the AI trains tilt? Yes. Yep. Cool. Um, uh, light lighting will come back to. Uh, do we have uh, multiple? As so Nico HD asks, multiple units in scenario planner? Yes. You've got singles, doubles, triples, and quads. Nice. The full set. Um, and we'll talk about layering later on as well. Uh, PIS. How is the PIS set? For it's automatic, um, so there's no in-cab control for the PIS. Okay. Uh, this is quick fire, this is. Uh, da -da -da. We'll come on to the DBBR 185.6 later. Uh, Virgin Voyager asks, I noticed the VVO branded Dostos are not in this DLC, although it runs on the Dresden S3 services. Is there a reason those specific Dostos are being used? I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll have to go and find out from the gameplay team. Okay, I did see a couple of people mention in the follow-up to the forum thread that it might not be the right time frame. Um, they might be a little bit. Oh, later that's on. that's what it is. That's almost certainly what it is. Back in this, so the, the effectively the six one two runs on this route around twenty twelve, um, and I don't know if EVO were running on this route at that point. Um, now, the immediate thing then is, hang on, the rail pool one eight five that wouldn't have been around in twenty twelve either. So the 185 rail pool is a little bit of an anachronism and um, it's done that way because, in all honesty, we wanted something that wasn't a red freight, another 185.2 red freight train, uh, but there was something we could readily achieve. So fortunately, rail pool are a brand new license we've been able to get and they are a fantastic partner to work with. Um, so uh, it was brilliant to, uh, to do that and get that in the game. So um, that's kind of why that's there, but otherwise than that, the answer to your question for most questions is going to be because it's around um, uh, 2012 time. Yeah, and uh, we'll come on to the rail pool livery a little bit later because there yeah. are some specific changes that have happened to that loco uh, that rail pool recommended that we do. Uh, so uh, we'll show you some of those when we get to showcase that a little bit later on. Um, yeah, so someone's asked if we see it. Yeah, we'll show you the uh, Kinder Spielecke later as well. Um, the the kids section. I thought that was a fun part of the uh, the, the loco. We'll, we'll, when we stop at the station, we'll do a little run through of that as well. Oh, Matt's going for his angles. Here we go. Gradients. What's the greatest gradient? This room, uh, I think. Out to an half on the tractor ramp. 2.6, we just hit. Is it 2.6? Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah, we're on the ramp at the moment. And you can sort of see here, you know, with the ramp has a bit of a plateau here before it goes up again. So it's, you can visually see that this is a steep, steep part of the room. It's, uh, it's quite impressive. Yeah. 
So it's, it's definitely uh, plateaued pretty quickly. And I think that's what we were saying earlier about the, you can't really take your eyes off this one. No, because now we're, we're in the short flat section. The train is now accelerating away like crazy. Whereas I was on near full power, just maintaining speed on the on the ramp, and we're just back on the on the gradient now. So having taken the power off, I've got to be a play again. <laughs> Someone actually earlier on was asked what those um, those triangle signs are. The what what looks like an upside down V and the normal side V uh, that you'll see on the side. I'll wait for one to come up here and I'll point it out. They relate to they're nothing that the, you need to, to worry about, but what they're there for is for the snow plows. Uh, and they tell the snowplow when to extend and there's one on the left hand side here and it's because of things that are obstructions and so forth it tells them to tuck in and pull out again and so forth so that they can uh, they can avoid any obstacles and not damage them things or themselves nice um, god you guys are coming out with some good questions today keep them keep them coming through in the chat we are we're loving the uh the the prompts and everything like that uh we'll try and again we'll do we'll try and do things like we'll show the horn again as we get further on we'll try and do a couple more external views of the till as well um later on as well um it uh, londo spark uh, i think we've answered this does it have lzb uh, lzb uh, lzb2 no there's no, no. lzb Okay. There's no AFB either. Someone asked about AFB. There's no AFB. You're going to have to drive this one yourself, I'm afraid. Uh, yep. Uh, and. Yeah, someone asked about steam. Obviously, not necessarily relevant to this particular route, um, but uh, steam is still a work in progress um, on that uh, when we have it. Uh, people ask you about layers and substitutions and timetables. Again, we'll reiterate some of that a little bit later on when we come towards the uh, the end of the stream. Uh, we've gone through them all at the start of the stream, so uh, you should be able to watch the VOD when we're done, and uh, you should be able to get that information right at the start. Yep. Yeah, we'll be going through past the narrow gauge section, uh, Matt, so I can uh, uh, show the narrow gauge section. It is purely scenery, but it's uh, it's fun, and I, I actually wasn't expecting the art team to go ahead and put some narrow gauge coaches on there. I thought it was brilliant. It really um, makes it look a lot less empty. Yeah, I agree. Um, the oh, this is uh, this is our first tilting train in TSW2. Has um, this kind of given us the appetite to do any more? Um, I don't quite know how many we have to choose from. But oh, there, there are many tilting trains. There are many tilting trains. One of the ones that was actually super appropriate for Dresden Risa is the ICT, um, which is the tilting a tilting variant of the ICE. Um, and um, but we you know we already have the appetite to do them. Um, it was more that when we were looking at this room um, and the um, the six one two came up as hey it's a tilting DMU. It's like that's so cool. We've got to do that. Um, so, um, but no, we now have tilting tech in the game and we've gone through the process of doing tilt. So, yes, that's a bit less work when we want to do something like a Pendolino um, or a, uh, an ICET or any one of a number of other tilting trains in the future. Oh, there are so many suggestions in the chat right now. Uh, I think we should put it on the uh, on the back burner. But, um, yeah, there's, there, I mean, again, yeah, with the, the functionality and the infrastructure is there now. Um, so hopefully it make it slightly easier for us to, to build something like this in the future. Yeah. Um, there are lots and lots of different variants and types of, of, of trains and locos that we would like to do. Um, and let's see if we can get the variety in there first and then build on them in, in the future. Um, let's have a look at some other questions. Um, there was lots. Uh, just, uh, a couple of people asking about how the throttle works um, I know uh, we've talked a little bit about it being similar to the G6 um, it might be worth that when we uh, get into Fre Freiburg um, just sort of doing a little bit of a, of a mini tutorial again when, yep. we, when we set off uh, uh, Ballandrau asks is this route connected to Reza Dresden route it's not this is a standalone route um, for reasons as we've explained I think a couple of times this is a different time zone Time zone, different time period, um, and uh, there, but there are layers that come onto it from the Ries Dresden route, so around, mainly around Ries, uh, Dresden station. Right, 
Russian Doge asks, is there an over-tilt protection system? Good question. I have no idea. I think I've it's got quite no idea about that. To over tilt for us, yeah. Uh, Chief Longshin asks, can we see the tilt actuators working? Uh, oh, hello, I've got to slow down, hang on. <laughs> uh, whilst you do so, um, I assume you can also um, play as a passenger on this one so you can see the tilt as a passenger yes. as well. Tip that down to the hundred. Right. Go to the sunny side. Uh, oh, look at that. Well, it was the sunny That's side. <laughs> oh, look at that. Uh, so we found ourselves asked for the AI train to tilt. Yeah, I think we answered that one already. Yes. Uh, Matt Jam CA asks, does this route extend from the other end of Dresden uh, compared to Riza? Uh, Matt, you might have answered that one for me. I can't remember what you what said was, earlier. What was the question, sir? Um, do, uh, does the route extend from the other end of Dresden compared to Riza? I think they kind of both come out the same. They both come out of the same, yeah. Off. So if you look at the, the, the route map, um, this is Dresden Station. Previously, you would have gone this way over the river via Neustadt Station, and this time you're going left out this way. And you'll find that the route goes down to, a, I don't know, about here somewhere, I think, on the Visa route. Sorry, was that the was that what you wanted to see on these on the actuator? I'm, I'm not 100% familiar with the terminology. Uh, I'm assuming it was the linkage on the outside. Someone said, what is GNT? GNT is an onboard safety system which allows me to drive faster than the speed limit. Um, so down over here, we have kind of fudged the fact that we don't have Ebola because normally the information about how fast you can go is on the Ebola, but we don't have the Ebola system. So we've put the information on here. So at least you can drive without the HUD. Um, so in this instance, I've got a speed profile of 100 kilometers an hour um, and a cup coming, I've got an 80 limit. So actually, I'm going to get told to slow down. You probably down want to slow down, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm just going to use the hydrodynamic brakes to just slow the train down for that um, that 80 limit. And what you'll find is in a minute, yeah, the GGNT light will come on, right, which it now has, which means I'm approaching the speed curve, and then it starts flashing when you're on the speed curve, like it has now. And this is just for your information, effectively, so you can track it. And then once I get to, um, once I'm down below where I need to be then it goes away and I can uh, I can um, pull that up. The other thing that GNT does is, um, GNT works a bit like Access in America in that I'm driving over these Belize's in the center of the track and they, what they do is as you go over them it downloads a bit of data from them and puts it in the train which tells it what all the upcoming speeds are um, in reality. Um, and then that will tell it, yes, you can slow down or they shall need to speed up. Any TSRs would be in that data download. So it's quite quite an intelligent system that gives it a lot more insight about what's going up and it provides another layer on top of VZV. Um, now, effectively, you already kind of have that because the HUD always has a knowledge of what's going up, uh, what's going on ahead of it. Um, but it's um, it's providing that information to the train. So we're only three like kilometers. Tight curve. <laughs> yeah, there's some pretty tight curves. We're only doing 70 now, so you're not going to see much tilt yeah. action uh, around some of these curves. But, but the uh, the GNT allows you to go quicker, and basically that is because of the tilt, isn't it? That the tilt allows that extra speed. Yes. Yeah. And for those people who are wondering what GNT stands for, again, uh, I'm going to whip it out again. It is Geschwindigkeitsüberwachung Neigentechnik. Any German speakers in the chat, let me know how I did. If there is a phonetic way of pronouncing it, please let me know. Uh, I'll <coughs> copy and paste it. Uh, but I'm sure the phonetic spelling will be a lot longer. Is there a passenger light button? Yeah, there is. Hey, actually. not bad. Could be worse. I will take it. Train Good. Lights. So I've got the passenger lights on. Yeah, there we go. We've got passenger lights on. Look at that. It's only taken uh, uh, 20 kilometres, 30 kilometres to turn the passenger lights on. <laughs> uh, 
uh, do the gangways between the coaches move as they should? I assume because of the tilt. Or is it just. Ah. We're going into a curve here. Yeah. yeah. Will there be failures of the tilting system, e.g. in heavy rain? I doubt that. I don't think we have failures of the tilt system, no. no. Once we go around this corner, let's do the horn again as well for everybody. Come on, we're going around the corner. We're not seeing the we're not seeing the middle part of. The... No, it can't really, and it doesn't help that you're not going to. You, everything's going to be kind of um, exaggerated, uh, anyway, or rather minimised uh, because of the length of everything that's uh, that's going on here. And it's all really dark. And I'm coming up to a stop, so I kind of want to do that. So we'll see. Top line speed is 160 kilometres, I believe. Yeah, because you haven't got LZB, well. you can't go faster than 160. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Strike Eagles asks, are there spilled coffee cups modelled when the train tilts? <laughs> uh, how many cars does the 612 have? It's a two car unit, it's a two car DMU, um, but you'll find multiples of them in various places. Uh, well, uh, Pegasus has asked about timetables, we'll go back to timetables at the end of the stream. We, we talked about it at the start, so if you missed that, go back to the start and you should be able to see all of it in detail. We will do a walk of the train, uh, showing the interior as well. Um, well, hopefully when we've stopped at uh, Freiburg. Right, we're just coming into Freiburg Sax now. There was a couple of questions about refueling scenarios. Can we refuel the um, BR612? I don't know. I, yeah, I honestly don't know the answer to that question. Um, I, have to, I have to look into that. Cool. Uh, yeah, the, the windows are available to open. I believe we opened them earlier. We've opened these. You can't open passenger windows, though. Okay. I feel like we should have like a gauge of... Uh, for, for the, the comfortableness of the journey, it's going to be, will the coffee spill over or will it will it be okay? And I think on this one, you'd be fine. We are running a little bit late as well, aren't we? We are, yes. So this is Freiburg Sachs. Yeah. But way too many brakes on there. Come on, up to the end of the platform. Come, you can do it. Look, even the board's having a go at me. Look, it says I'm late. The white bar on the top. <laughs> that's a good little. That's a good little addition. I like that. Get outside, people want to see the doors opening, so let's see the doors opening. Those rush hour passengers coming out. Let's have a wander. Yes, let's go through. Kiddies area where there are no kiddies sitting. Obviously, because adults are all big kids anyway. <laughs> and that, that those are that are is that um, something that we've? No, uh, that's the real thing as far as I'm that's aware. the real thing. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of the beauties of being fully licensed. Yeah. Cycle area, I think. Luggage area, that sort of jazz. Corridor. I really like the lighting. Yeah, totally uh, occupied toilet there. Oh, thief, thief, Nuke is saying he's literally jumping up and down in his chair right now because he's so excited for this one. 
That's brilliant to hear. And then we arrive in the other cab. The My Life is, is a kiddie area real in the 612. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, they have the kids area. Got PIS on the outside. Steps and going back through into here. So if we, when we set off, Matt, if you could just do the throttle again. Yeah. Let me uh, shut the just, doors. Yeah. Right. So next step is next stop is flow hire. I think flow hire is where the uh, the narrow gauge stuff is. So we. Uh, so I'm going to um, release the brake is just a normal brake there's nothing fancy about the brake right now the way the throttle works is if you look at the gauges here you've got a zero an O in the middle zero then you've got an a b um and then you've got something above it and something above that yeah um Blood types yeah something like that so this first step is the decrease step which doesn't make any sense because we doesn't do anything because we're not we're not in a we're not in power so that's fine the next step up is the hold step Again, you're not going to see anything, but if we've got power, this will maintain that power. Now, if I press up again, if you look at the purple pink line up there, uh, you know what? I'm just going to say what it is. The pink line up there, um, and as I hold the throttle in the full in the full forward position, you'll see the pink line come up. So I'm going to push that up to 20. So you hold the thing up, and it'll go up, and then release it. And once you release it, it goes back into that hold position. You can see the engines have um, picked up. And, uh, and you can see we're now speeding up and we're accelerating away. If I want more power, so let's put it up to 40. I'll hold it in the forward position again, release it, and it'll go back into the hold. Now the engines will continue to accelerate as we accelerate and we'll keep going. So this is not a speed like an AFB type thing. This is um, just literally it's going to keep applying power um, and um, until it runs out of the ability to provide power essentially. Um, so if I'm accelerating fast enough then I can just put it forward and I can get some more power going on and then you'll see the engines have responded again and they're accelerating a bit more. Now once I've got enough speed, so let's say I want to do 50, so as we come up 50 I'll put it into the power decreasing, you'll see that the pink line starts dropping again and now we're going to just, there. now we're at no power, now we're coasting. So going the other way round, if I put it into zero, which is the off position, you've got exactly the same controls in reverse. It's a lapped throttle, essentially. Um, and this side you round, you've got the hydrodynamic brake. So this is the equivalent of an electric brake or an electronic brake in um, other trains, but this is using the, hydro, the hydro, hydraulic engine in reverse. Again, this is identical to the G6. So this is the decrease step. This is the hold step. So now what you'll notice is that as I apply power, Bremson is now lit up, and again the pink line goes up, and the engines have responded, and we're now slowing down. So it's effectively driving the engines in the reverse way. And now when I'm happy with the throttle, I'm, I, I want to lower it, put it back into decreasing, back into hold, back into decreasing. That's it. Put it back in. Press the right button. Get it into decreasing, and then we can hold our speed there. So it's it is just. It's a relatively straightforward system once you get the hang of it. Simon, identical to the G6. So if you're used to the G6, you will have no trouble with this whatsoever. Yeah, and F Block L um, puts in the chat that in, if you look at the actual um, uh, the throttle, uh, oh, oh my god, the uh, the markings on the throttle, it's ALF, which is up, uh, F, which is Fahren, which is drive, uh, AB is or AB is down, and then the Bremsen is brake. There you go. So you'd normally use the hydrodynamic brake for speed management, uh, like speeding up, slowing down a bit, and then you'd use your friction brakes, which is this one over here, the train brake, um, if you want to stop or if you want more brakes. Obviously it's always safety first, you use the brake that will achieve what you need to do, but the hydrodynamic brake comes with the fact that it doesn't have any kind of wear and tear on the, on the brake shoes, for example, so it's, it's nicer under maintenance people. Uh, release date, Ali's asked for a release date. It is next Thursday. Uh, we put an article on our website with more details. And if you've, if you've got Steam, we use Steam. Steam, you can pre order uh, now on Steam. You get 10% discount. Um, in terms of pricing, yeah, it'll be 
standard price for, for a room. Um, so if you if you know what the standard room price is, you you know what that is. Denka, sorry, uh, what's your question? I, I've not seen it. Um, we quite often miss questions, I'm afraid. So uh, yeah, ping it again. We, we've got a thousand people watching, so there's quite a few people that are throwing in questions. We can't get to everybody, but we'll try and do as many as we can. Um, are there any coupling scenarios or services? Uh, P LP Gamer. Joe, help. Don't know the answer to uh, that. Yeah, Joe. Joe's in the chat, so he should be able to grab a uh, jump on that one if needed. Uh, what was the uh, other ones that I saw? Oh, uh, there's a good question about reference material. How did we get reference material for this? I, I guess licensed partner, but. Um, no, it's actually, I think it was a combination of, um, uh, I mean, it was, I mean, Mike spent a lot of time, uh, Mike Goltz, who did the setup for this, spent a lot of time with the, um, uh, looking it up and with his own contacts, um, getting reference for how the train worked. Uh, our team were able to get some photograph, a lot of photographs of it. We, you know, we haven't been able to go out and get photographs for it, but we, you know, we're able to get the reference. Um, from a variety of sources, uh, working with Mike uh, locally and some of Mike's contacts as well, uh, it's been you know it's been a team effort. You know, a lot of the projects these days have become much more team efforts because we we just can't get the reference the same way we would have previously because of the uh, the COVID situation. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm seeing a couple of people that are. Um, if you go on to if you if you go on to the um, our website and check out the article, there is a link on the article to add it to your Steam wish list or to um, to pre-order it. You should be able to do it on there. Um, I, it seems like it's not searchable within Steam yet, but sometimes Steam takes a little while to propagate um, certain new things that come into there. So we'd recommend going through the website. And there's a link on the website. Uh, Denka, I'm still not seeing your question. I've just scrolled up and I can't see it. So uh, maybe if one of the mods can see it, you can DM either myself or uh, JD on Discord. Yeah, please do. Uh, Chief Longshin asked, how did the sounds come about? I think we touched on this at the start, but we had a couple of thank yous uh, for, for the sounds on this one. Uh, yeah, so uh, Mike, um, who did the audio and the uh, physical and the train setup for this one, and I think. I can't remember whether Mike got the audio recordings himself or whether he was working with one of his his uh, contacts. So, uh, but it was all in the uh, in, in the Mike Goltz umbrella. Um, so, uh, full credit on the uh, the audio. I think for uh, down in that direction, that was uh, it's really good. It's really good. Should we have another horn? Let's do another horn. There you go. There's horn. There we go. Distance scenery looks good as well in the, on this route. I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking it feels very uh, real, like very kind of full of life, I think. A couple of questions about uh, the catenary. Um, does the pantograph tilt? Um, obviously the train to down the catenary. I don't think the 143 has that, no. Uh, this obviously doesn't because it's a DMU. Um, yeah. But the the 143, I don't think it has that capability, no. Not on our version. <coughs> <coughs> the windows are open, yeah. Per request earlier. Uh, download size, I don't think we've got the exact download size yet. Um, but I imagine it'd be fairly standard size yes um, I don't have it on the top of my head I think when I installed it on the PS5 it was something like a six gigabyte package file so probably something along those lines down to the hundred and ten again your d and would over here is going to tell you what your uh, what your speed limits are if you want to run without the HUD Otherwise than that, the HUD is, is GNT aware, so it will give you the GNT aware speed limits if um, uh, if you're running with G, with the GNT enabled train. One one caveat on it is that even if you don't turn GNT on on this train in the cabinet back there, this the HUD will still give you GNT speeds because it's the the train itself classes itself as a GNT train. There's 
that wasn't quite we wanted to make it to where only the HUD responded to what the train was set up to do but we weren't able to do that so the 143 will give you the normal speeds of the route this train will always give you the GNT enabled speeds of the route cool uh, someone's asked about the Amtrak uh, livery I know we talked about that before Christmas I think there'll be an update in the roadmap uh, next Tuesday so that'll be the first roadmap of the year um, team is working on it uh, and we want to get out as soon as we can Yes, yes, I was just trying to finish that up last night. Yes. So we're going to uh, Fluha. We are indeed. I'm pronouncing the O uh, with the umlaut on it as in Meza Erzul. So hopefully that is right, uh, football fans. So um, how much. So we go to Fluha uh, and then how much further have we got on this particular branch map? I'm just conscious that I'd quite like us to do something in the evening. I think we've got about another 10 minutes after that to get to Chemnitz, the end of the line. Okay, cool. Apparently it's Fleur. Fleur. Let's try without pronouncing the H. Uh, Jonathan, uh, any idea about pre-order discount on the Epic Store? I would say if it's not there at the moment, um, it's probably not going to be there. Um, I think some of the some things we're able to get pre-orders on for other um, for other platforms. Sometimes it's only on Steam. Yeah. Hundred. You see the speed limits going up and down and up and down, and it's because it slows you down a bit for the curve, straightens, speeds you, B speeds you up again on the straights. You know, it's um, you know, it's it is quite a uh, a fun route to uh, to drive with all the different speeds on it. You really got to pay attention. Yeah. Uh, does the BR143 get any updates on this route? I, I don't think it's any different. Don't think so. No. No. Uh, what are the yellow arrow signs on the side of the track? I don't know if we've got. Those are the snowplow right signs. Now. Cool. That we talked about earlier. So they're basically they're nothing relevant to the route. No, there is a, there isn't a snowplow here. Um, hello, I'm I'm breaking the. Uh, <laughs> I'm breaking Blame GNT the chat, speeds. Blame the chat, man. I'm Go breaking on, GNT speeds, and it's getting upset with me. Um, yeah, so the, v, uh, the the signs on the other side tell it when to tell a snowplow train when to tuck in and when to extend its um, snowplows. Because if a bridge or an obstruction is coming up, then it just um, it tells them to do that. But no, there's no snowplow in the route. Uh, it's an authentic it's sign that's present, and there's a lot of them, so you couldn't not do it. Uh, Liam's asked how long is the launch discount available for? I believe it's up until launch. It's a pre-order discount, so um, by extension, when it's out, that uh, offer ceases to exist. Uh, any smoke coming from the exhaust at all? Sometimes it's really difficult to see when it is. I mean, there is. I have seen it coming out. I don't know if it's coming out at the minute, though. Oh, yeah, we're going down here. Well, no wonder. I'm let's, say, fa fa let's, fa let's face it. You need to pay attention more than let's look at the exhaust. So I, I have seen smoke um, in the trains when we where when I um, started at Chemnitz, and I've seen them there bubb bubbling away. But I don't know whether I'm seeing it here. Sometimes the uh, the snow, uh, the snow, the smoke is um, hard to see, and sometimes it outright vanishes. To be fair, so it's a core issue. Right. One. Get hold of this uh, thing. Got two percent down gradient here at the moment, <laughs> and I'm trying to. Uh, and I hadn't noticed, so I'm sitting here wondering why the train keeps running away. See, this is again. This is what we're talking about. This is quite a uh, an attention um, demanding, demanding route, I think. Um, deceptively so, I think. Uh, is it compatible livery designer? Yes, I think we answered that earlier. Zuzi Train Sim asks, is the 1000 hertz and 500 hertz detector, are they swapped? I have no idea. I didn't realize, I thought the detector was just one belly uh, detector on the right hand side. Uh, again, I'm going to defer to Lucas on that one, and uh, if, I don't know if Lucas is about. Okay, um, and... Uh, I'm going to call him 
try because I don't know how to pronounce that first bit. We see new overhead wires on uh, Dresden Reza on the way to Meisen. Why don't we see them here? Uh, because they, um, it was um, Lucas was experimenting with a, a more detailed way of placing the uh, the overhead wires, um, and the system isn't. You know, our overhead wire system isn't isn't great, frankly. Uh, the tool is uh, is quite limited. Lucas has sort of proved that how we can use the system to do that, but it's it takes like ten times longer. Um, so out of Lucas doing that, we've sort of got ideas for how we can expand the tooling, um, but. Redoing, doing an entire route like this, the way that Lucas did that route was uh, beyond impractical. Um, but it was helpful in that it's shown us what we need to do uh, going forward. We actually, one of the other things now is that we have um, um, the on the track infrastructure team, which is the they do track signals, markers, all the stuff that the infrastructure that makes it work. Uh, previously, the overhead wires would be done by the uh, route environment art team. Um, and uh, going forwards, they're going to be done by the track infrastructure team. And these are this is so, you know, the route environment team are, are there to create, you know, to make the route look beautiful. Um, but there's technical accuracy that needs to be there with the overhead wires, which they're not familiar with. Uh, it's very it's a complicated system. Um, so we're moving that to the um, the track infrastructure team, and we've hired a person, a new person who started now, and they are going to be. Um, you know, focusing on overhead wires uh, and so forth, so that we can uh, we can deliver that much better uh, once we get new tooling and so forth. So they're going to be focusing on that. So it should be uh, better go forwards. Um, but this is where we're at on this room. Three kilometres to go on this. You find the accelerometer quite handy with this route because you balance the uh, controls so that you know whether you're speeding up or slowing down. Good question which we probably should have asked before now, Matt, is why, why did we choose this particular route? Obviously we've, we've the last German route that we did focused on Reza Dresden, we're kind of bringing Dresden back into the fore with this one. What, what was the kind of rationale between but behind us kind of choosing this particular uh, this particular route? So there are a number of things. Uh, one of them was that uh, we want. Oh, hello, hello. Oops. Oh no. Oh no. It's right. It will. It will let go. You don't have to actually stop, but it needs all because it's quite aggressive braking when you break the uh, when you break the speed limit. It takes ages for the brakes to come off again. So um, no, I didn't slow down far enough, fast, far and fast enough for that. Never mind. We've got to stop at the next station anyway. So that's fine. I intended it. That's what I intended. It's fine. We, we always want to show what the emergency brakes look like anyway, so... Um, uh, why did we choose this route? So, um, having done a lot of routes that are, um, you know, fairly busy commuter type routes, um, we were looking at something a bit more heritage, a bit more where rail tours might go, we were looking for extensive countryside, um, and um, this route kept coming up uh, over and over again. I think it's the one of the top uh, routes for rail tours to run on, um, and um, it's it's just because it's beautiful. Um, and I really, really. Uh, and then when we looked at the route, and you're like, oh, this route is just spinning. It's all over the place in terms of its curves. Um, and then you look into it some more, and you find out about the 612 tilting DMU running it, and it's just ticking more and more boxes for being. Well, it's got it's it's not just another 146 or another 143. Yes, there is the 143, but the 612 it offers a uh, a really interesting uh, bit of variety. So it's kind of like it's it's those kinds of things that were really important. We're seeing some narrow gauge on the right. Hentis asks. Hang on. Well, maybe there isn't here that's the narrow gauge. Hang on, we'll have a look. This doesn't look like the station that has the narrow gauge. <coughs> oh, we're past the narrow gauge. Yet. Oh. Long, long past it. Sorry, that might have been that might have been either when I was blathering on, or maybe when uh, we uh, Matt was trying to keep control of uh, of the the, the Oh gauge. yeah, it's here. This is where the narrow gauge stuff is down here, because it wanders alongside the track and then disappears off. Or is that it? No, that's not it. That's not it. I'm sure Red will tell us. 
Where is it? Oh, that was apparently our throttle tutorial. Oh, yeah, this is the narrow gauge bit here. This is the narrow gauge bit here, yeah. Right. Uh, oh, the narrow... Okay, the throttle tutorial. See, this is the thing. We can only do so many things at once, so anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So we try and show as much as we possibly can do during these. Um, we are... We have only got a certain amount of time with which to do these. Uh, we've as got, much as we've got the stream next next week as well for yeah. a release stream for it as well. So. Yeah. So we will have a release stream as well where if there's anything that we don't cover tonight and you'd like to see it, obviously we want you to try and have the most informed <laughs> info, uh, decision on whether you want to invest time or money into this. Um, then make sure you tune in for that stream as well. We'll try and cover anything that we've missed from this week. Where's this guard's buzzer you want me to to press, Ed? He wants me to press a button, but he hasn't told me where it is. <laughs> Desk light dimmer. Door button lights dimmer. Engine starts. Bell. Well, oh. Da da da. Uh, Lond Londo's asked Jodie says we've got a limited time he's not seen Matt do streaming has he of course I've seen Matt streaming I know he loves to go for four or five hours at a time however we have both been working since probably about eight o'clock this morning uh, and I don't know about Matt but I could probably do with some sleep so uh, and Matt could probably do with some food actually at some point no it's all good I have my McDonald's <coughs> Right, Chemnitz, ten kilometres. Yeah, so we'll stop off. At, we'll stop at Chemnitz. We'll do a little tour of the station briefly, uh, and then we will uh, do. Do you want to do night with the uh, rail pool? Can do. Yeah. Delivery. Yeah. Then we'll kill two birds with one stone on that one. So yeah, we'll do um, a night, uh, a brief night run with the uh, the rail pool livery, um, just to show you what that looks like. We'll show it during the day though, so you can see it during the day, and then we'll do a scenario in the evening, or uh, the service in the evening. One thing I haven't done though is, is run this thing from standstill from the outside. I just realised I meant to do that on the last station. So let's just stop, and we'll do an out uh, do the um, a start from the uh, outside. While we're running on this is PS5. Emergency brake test. The kids are having fun in the Kinder Spiel Lecker. This is a what you see is what you get because we're, yeah. we're at a point now we're pretty much um, I think today's build which is and this isn't quite today's build but it's only a day or so old um, is uh, is the one that goes up for certification or final certification. Yeah. 
twilight. It just looks like we're flying. It feels like it does feel like a flight simulator, like a kind of um, there's a there's a ride at, at Disney at some point where you're almost like you're flying over the fields, and it's it feels like that. And I can't remember the name of the ride. It's probably that's probably the worst analogy because nobody knows what I'm talking about. But it, it, you get the sense that you are hovering to a certain extent. I think it's quite mm. cool. <laughs> Shut up, big bean kid. Zinf probably asks, how does it, how does it say uh, Kinderspielecker on the right way round on both sides of the uh, on both sides of the window? Magic, that's what it is. Magic. I think it does in reality. How? That's that's incredible. If so. <laughs> yeah, I think it does in reality, um, and they've had to find a way of because it was it, if I know what we saw a screenshot where it was showing that you could see the two either side of each other and just look terrible um, but I might be wrong I don't know I'm sure it came up uh, and it's been done that way on purpose wow technology eh um, for the people have asked about what time it goes live difficult to say because uh, it, it tends to there is a manual element to uh, particularly Steam because the Steam team push it live uh, or the Valve team push it live and so it's when they are up, which is normally late afternoon UK time. Um, uh, consoles are a little bit before that, sort of morning-ish our time. Um, but it will be at some point on the 13th of January UK, UK time. For those asking about the Abula, yes, completely agree. Um, it's, uh, but it's the way we want to do the system, uh, rather than just having a bunch of images that need to be then done on per root basis. We want something which will dynamically pull the data off of the route so you can use it anywhere. Um, but um, that's going to take a little bit more to implement. The team have started doing research on Ebola, but it's, we haven't actually got any um, firm plans of when that will materialise into a route yet. And on Epic, my, my mic moved away. Uh, on Epic, it's a similar kind of story. We, we put it live when the Epic team are around. Um, and that tends to be a similar time to Steam, but it's not exactly the same. So I'm reticent to give you your time, um, just in case it doesn't end up hitting exactly that point and you are upset with us because it's, it's 10 minutes later than the, 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 the time that I've said on a stream. So assume it's kind of afternoon-ish uh, UK time. The, um, I will we'll probably come to this on the, when we talk about the um, rail pool livery, but um, will that, um, will that livery, obviously it, it uh, layers onto other bits and pieces, but does, um, will those, the changes to the base loco um, be implemented on any of the other routes at all? Um, no plans for that at this point, no. No, okay, because it is a specific, um, yeah, I mean, as again, I'll, I'll talk through some of the changes when we get there. But yeah. we, we've taken a lot of feedback from Railpool specifically on their 185.6 and yeah. implemented that into the thing. It's really subtle changes, to be fair. It's nothing out of this world, but it was stuff that uh, Railpool were, you know, really keen that we uh, get in to get it right. Do you know what, Matt? I think that's exactly that's pretty much exactly how I phrased it in Discord earlier. Uh, it's, it's not earth-shatteringly different, but it's there are a few things that they've. Um, They've, they've asked that we, we include um, and have really helped us with reference material on including. Mm. <coughs> right, we've got flashing light for eight. I'm going to acknowledge that just because it's never a bad thing to acknowledge, but shouldn't need to. 70 kilometres or below. So we are. Got an old turntable over here. Look. into cabinets now. Um, question from Rob J. Is the 612's horn in reality shared with any of the other German stock? If so, will we see it in any of the future updates that we no idea. use? No, I, I thought that as soon as I was asking, I was like, I don't think we're going to be able to answer that one, but there we go. Oh yes, GNT was noticed has turned off. Thank you, Lucas. Because we're coming into the terminal, GNT is switched off. We 
are almost there. And just to confirm something that we mentioned earlier, this does include rush hour passengers, rush hour behaviour. Um, I was quite surprised. I wasn't expecting that. So uh, you will see the um, the different clothing, different passenger behaviour, the volume of passengers um, that you'd expect from uh, the um, Reeds Dresden route and the Boston Sprinter route. You would indeed. Uh, Pegasus asked, will there be more news on the Grand Central line next week? I assume that's the Harlem mm -hmm. line. Um, there will be a roadmap. Um, I don't think there'll be any extra news on, on that particular route for the time being. No, 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 there isn't. Uh, Teacher Far, no, no passengers with luggage. We haven't got to that yet. Um, I uh, wanted them to have briefcases. I wanted them to have all of that stuff, but... Yeah, we wanted it as well. So, uh, so oh god, all, all all the complicated names. Seb uh, Elgiatore asked, "Is Chemnitz so important to have a huge station?" Apparently so. We'll let anybody who has been to Chemnitz say in the chat because I could not tell you. Not been to Chemnitz. Never been to Saxony, sadly. It's a fairly big junction. There's, um... Oh, good. Because uh, you've got um, trains that head up north, and actually, the I think it's this line here heads up to Risa. Um, you know, there's, so there's trains going off in all directions. It is quite a big junction. It's a nice station, though. Someone else is the giant Karl Marx head in Chemnitz in the game. I we didn't no see idea. it, didn't so see it. <laughs> there you go. Speed profile, as you can see. You know, if you do, if you weren't uh, seeing all the speed changes there, you can see on the graph uh, where all the speed changes were, yeah. and there were many. Um, so uh, as you can see, quality driving there from the uh, the the gold uh, the silver coloured gold medal that I earned. Um, Right, so uh, let's have a quick look at the, uh, just remind on the services, so you've got 10 on the 612, which is how many there are in reality, so that's how many there are, we were hoping there'd be more, but there's only 10 in reality, um, and you've got the rail pool, which has 20, you've got the 363, which has got 7 shunting services, um, the 363 is identical to the Dresden one, there's no changes to it, um, the 143 has 74, and it runs S3 and RB30, and RE3, uh, so there's a variety of stopping patterns on this and this will obviously get the lower speed limits the ones that are relevant to the boards the traditional speed limits because there's no tilting and there's no GNT on that uh, and then lastly the um, the Dosto cab car has got the uh, equi the equivalent in the other direction so 73 services on that one so let's have a quick look at the rail pool in the daylight yep we'll do, um, the, we'll do the, the round robin and then we'll do a little bit in the evening to yeah. give people a bit of the view of the night I'll do lighting. That one. <coughs> I noticed the temperature in January was minus one point six and it definitely feels like that here in the UK at the moment, so All right, let's just get the train set up. Uh turn off the that one. Breaks off got the lights so we'll put it on power right so this is the uh the rail pool uh 186 185.6 um actually i haven't got lights on we should probably have lights on let's do that leave safety systems off because we're not going to drive it long enough to put safety C systems can on. we address the elephant in the room first of all matt mm -hmm. what is that word art mm -hmm. oh that up is there that Yep. In reality, it's word art, but because copyright and all the rest of it, we're not allowed to use word art for that. So our, our, our art team had to recreate the word art by hand. It's uh, And this was one of the bits of feedback that Raoul Paul did. They said that they wanted that sign there. They were very particular about wanting 
that. I think it's in a couple of other places on the cab as well. Oh, there it is over there. Look. So they wanted that. That was a key thing that they were they were they they wanted in. They're obviously very proud of that. Um, so um, yeah, there's there's tips in there about um, driving and and so forth. So there is actually some actually really useful. It's like having a tutorial to some extent in the uh, in the cab there. So it is it is worth having. Some of the other changes that Rail Paul gave us feedback on were these levers have been shortened um, from where they were. Um, the um, down here, it's not a DB logo; it's a more generic uh, German 15k V logo uh, on there. Uh, down in this corner here, you've got a, like an, a horn button, which isn't used yet. This is for, they're going to be installing um, um, uh, electric horns or something on there. Um, so that's the button that they've got ready for that to go in. And then there were a few detail changes up here, like the way that the pantographs are shaped. Uh, and some of the other stuff. See so if you compare the the, the roofing detail with the um, the 185.2, you'll notice there's some changes there. I can't remember what. Like I said, it's it's fairly minor stuff, um, but it it makes it different to the other one. This is stuff that again, Railpool were uh, really passionate about. We've been, they've been really fun to work with actually. The um, you know they gave us quite extensive feedback on on the model. Um, and uh, had generally good, you know, put some good feedback on the game as a wide. They clearly play. Let's put it that way. Um, they were offering feedback on stuff unrelated to what we'd sent them, which is which is fantastic to be honest. It's um, it's really good getting that sort of unsolicited feedback from these things because then you know people actually care about what you're doing. I just can't believe that we we recreated our own word art circa Microsoft Word when i was growing up uh and put it in <laughs> put it in this logo it's just it's brilliant love it uh but yeah from what you've been saying about they've been a brilliant partner to work with um and hopefully uh, we'll be able to do more stuff with them in the future yeah they've been quite uh, very forthcoming with providing um fit a photograph um reference libraries for us for some of their trains as well so it's um you know it's it's you yeah, know it's it's really transformational having uh, a partner that you know you can work with that positively um not that others don't but you know mo a lot of them are just um it's well yes you've used our logo correctly in this instance it was just no we want that button different and we want this different and change that and that's great do more of that and that's just spot on that's exactly what we need to do these things as accurately as possible is um uh in terms of the audio is there any changes to the audio at all not that i'm aware of no no okay so Quick, quick blast of the horn, and then we'll change to night lighting. I love this livery, I have to say. I think it's really clean, really... Um, oh, the, the light reflecting on that looks great. fantastic livery and um, you know as I said key goal here not another red train we, yeah. there's nothing against red trains but we have a lot of red trains and we've done the 185.2 in red so many times now we didn't have the ability to do a completely different type of train because Railpool have got a number of different locos in their roster um, but we wanted to uh, do something uh, different in some way and that's why we've got the Railpool which is very cool so I'm very pleased we got that in there yeah nice one uh, all right, should we do some night lighting? Yeah, where would you like to see your night lighting? Let's ask the chat, shall we? Where would you like to see some night lighting? We're probably going to spend about five, ten minutes looking at it. So um, where would you like to see? Chemnitz, two votes for Chemnitz so far. Chemnitz. Chemnitz, Chemnitz. Yep, looks like Chemnitz is the one. Let's do it. Uh, eight o'clock. If it's not if it's not dark enough, I'll uh, I'll change the season. I mean, it looks dark enough to me. Let's let's all get wiggly. <laughs> Can we get that on a t-shirt? Let's get wiggly. There it Just goes. The, the root, the root map on it. Kind of sums the root up as well. That 
that's it. We've steadied up. Right, now we can uh, get the doors open. If you open the doors, by the way, and then do the tilt, tilt on, it won't do the self-test. Think about it for a minute, and that will occur to you as to why that's a really good idea. Uh, because uh, if passengers were getting on and off while the train was bouncing up and down, bad things, TM. Oh, yeah, let's put the train lights on for a novelty this time, shall we? Got the brakes set up. Let's get the doors locked. Uh, left. And switch that to headlights. Uh, if you find, by the way, when you want to uh, go, you can't. Just toggle the power. And because sometimes that will release the interlock. Uh, XST Gamer said, if you turn tilt off, will you not get the higher speed limits? <coughs> uh, you will. The, the, because of the way that the, uh, the game is set up, we weren't able to tie the speed limits to the, um, uh, the HUD. Uh, and what the HUD is telling you is the speed limit and what it will track you as the speed limit. I just realised I haven't turned on the fun stuff. Um, so um, so if you're driving the 612 with or without GNT, it's GNT really that gives you the uh, the higher speed limits. Um, but you won't get the... Um, with the GNT turned off, you won't get um, the, um, the Ebola stuff, although not the Ebola. You won't get the information on the right screen. Um, and the GPA magnets will still be enforced. So essentially you still need to be following the real speed limits, which are the ones you'll see on the, um, uh, on the, on the uh, speed boards and so forth. So it, it's not quite ideal, but it was the best that we were able to do. But we wanted to make sure the HUD, which is, we think most people run it with the tilt on, and we wanted the HUD to represent what you'd get with that. So that's why we did it that way. Here we go. Here's where the fun starts. I love light night. Light. No, sorry, night lighting. I will say one thing. I think the capture card is capturing the game a bit dark from uh, from what I remember seeing it. So you might find it's a bit lighter, but it's not that much different. This does look darker than I remember it being, though. Oh, there are instrument lights actually. Yeah, good shout. Let me uh, just switch the cab light on while we have a moment of uh, light here. Um, desk light. Oh, that's the desk light. That's not what we want. Door button lights. Yeah, I thought there was an instrument light dimmer. I am prepared to be wrong though. I'll look into that. I thought there was. Because you can't see how fast you're going without that. Lucas, how do I turn that on? <laughs> no headlights. Uh, headlights are on, but they're uh, they're uh, typical for our game. Unfortunately, they're uh, a bit not that useful. Next to the PZB indicators. Imagine you as an actual driver right now, just sort of fumbling around in the dark, like where where am I? Just pressing every button and flicking every knob. I would not be uh, moving this train until I had uh, <laughs> exact knowledge of what was going on. Oh, Next one thing we haven't touched. Oh, haven't touched. sorry, it's these things, isn't it? Um, one of the things we haven't touched on is rail driver. 
Uh, will this have rail drive as on launch? It does. That didn't work, Lucas. On the other side, left hand side. Oh. Of course. <laughs> oh, here we go. Hey! There we go. Got there in the end. I, I, I practice well and uh, I uh, research properly. And so, uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, that's better. But it's quite, again, I think similar to uh, Reza Dresden, the lighting is a bit warmer. It's a bit kind of... Um, yeah, so like uh, I said, the team have taken some, some of the stuff that uh, was done on that route and tried to apply it, but um, I would by no means want to be saying they, they've been, they've, they believe they've, been, they've done as well as um, Ed and Lucas did on the lighting on uh, Reza. But it's dark, so I know that, um, you know, and I... I know for me personally, when I'm driving in the dark, I prefer it to be dark. And not everybody is the same because it's you can't really see much out front. But uh, I know for me, I like it to be dark when I'm driving, not um, heavily moonlit personally. It's different different for different routes. So Clinchfield, I like it moonlit because I can shunt and switch in the night, for example. But um, this floats my boat that way. Yeah. Matt's idea of research, so ask a chat. Yeah, totally. The signs are reflective from what I, well that you can see them coming into into view yeah I haven't I, I'll need to check whether or not it looks like it's using the um, the material that it did because they're, they're you're brightening up and then dimming as they get closer so mm. it looks like they're using that I haven't checked that with the team to be sure yeah okay um, where are we with I'm trying to think, is there any uh, 6.26k? Should we go to F Fleur? Uh, and then uh, you can see Fleur in. Uh, <laughs> I've no idea what I'm saying. The, ch the chat could be completely trolling me right now. Uh, uh, and then we finish up for the night. So, what I'll say is we've got about five kilometres to go. Any final questions from the chat? And then we'll finish when we get to Fleur. Greek Badger, can you show how the GNT system works? Um, if you re-watch the stream, um, we've done a couple of instances where we've gone through what GNT is all about um, and how it works in practice. Uh, that's probably going to be able to give you a better insight than yeah. us rushing Quickly through it. Quickly rushing through it, yeah. Yeah. Narrow gauge coaches. We'll have a quick explore on foot around it. Remind me what station it's at, Ed. And I'll, I'll do a quick explore on foot on that station next. Is asking JD drive the train on stream next week, please. Not this train, uh, but I can say that I will be doing something. Uh, not next week, but the week after. Um, the narrow gauge, I think, is a, I think it was the first stop, which was Freiburg. Oh, I got it below the 10 kilometers, the so no brakes. Calling it a win. Is there a donkey? I think there is somewhere, I would imagine. Oh, uh, I don't know. I'd be surprised if the team haven't shoved a donkey somewhere on the route. It's, uh, that would be unusual for them. Fractal Hainsberg, okay. Don't worry, they wouldn't trust me with a preview. It's not a preview. <laughs> I wouldn't trust me with a preview, to be honest. Have you seen my four up challenge performances to date? As long as there's no bell, you know. <laughs> uh, Dennis Pasnay has asked, <coughs> are there any drivable services added with extra layers? I don't, I think we answered this at the start. Don't no, the extra layers only add no. AI traffic. I mean, uh, um, Joe gave me the stats. There's about 200 playable services. I think it's 196 is what we could see. Um, and if you include the AI, there's over a thousand services. But the other services, the 800 odd services, are not playable. They're just basically filling up Dresden fully. 
Um, and then there's other substitution options to let other trains come into this route. The rail pool I don't think will show up on other routes yet, but we'll try and activate that because essentially it's, it's got its own operator tag, whereas all the other routes are looking for MRCE and DB cargo. So we need to add rail pool into their list. Um, so at this point, I'm not going to promise it appears on other routes. Obviously, you can scenario designer it anyway you like, but um, but we're going to we'll um, add it onto the um, uh, to Adam's giant list of things um, that he's looking at to. Uh, make that possible. One and a half kilometers to go down to the 90 now. So yeah with GNT when they when you're gonna get when you're slowing down to a uh, GNT speed uh, or any speed actually while you're under GNT uh, 200 meters before the um, speed curve starts the GGNT light goes on solid uh, with an alarm and then once it starts flashing you're on the reduction curve um, and um, you need to you need to be accelerating at that point so that you've got a chance of then hitting the stop hitting the the, uh, the target speed. I see how we're asking we turn off the HUD. How do you feel about that, Matt? There we go. So you're HUDless for the last 500 meters. 500 meters. So the narrow gauge I think was at Freiburg, um, so that'd be the next station up. But I'm not sure what that, I think. How, we'll how just I'm explore sure. foot because we'll be, be here another yeah. 20 minutes driving there, which I'm fine with. But <laughs> I've sound like a real Grinch, and I promise you I'm not. Uh, but we want to try and make sure that these these are all these these give you a good insight as to what's uh, what's going on. So if we can if we can skip it and go on foot, then let's go that way, shall we? We will skip and go on foot. Exactly. Senor Snore, you've just entered the stream. Well, we're coming to the end of the stream, but what that means is that the VOD will be available pretty soon. Uh, we go into all of the tilt stuff then. So if you want to watch the rewatch the VOD, that'll have all the uh, all the details. Ooh, hello, we got a collectible. There we go. I think there was a medipack round here, I saw. Yeah, there you go. Another one. Ta da So medipacks, uh, route maps, gnomes, and something else that I can't remember. Right, let's go and go to Freitor Hainsberg or something. Uh, explore on foot. Is it Freital? That's Tarrant. Freital Hainsberg. Was it Freital Hainsberg? I thought it was at Freiburg. Someone said Freital Hainsberg earlier on. We can always we can we can jump to multiple places if we want. It costs nothing. That's true. Yeah. Um, Freiburg Sachs was the first place that we stopped, so let's go there. See what I'm For, sorry, is, I, I might have. Oh, Simon says Freiburg. Yeah. Right, okay. Sorry. I mean, we can see Freiburg again. There we go. There you go. This Freiburg looks lovely. Looks lovely, doesn't it? And there's a collectible. Boom. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's this. And let us uh, go to Hainsburg. Let's do this in the day so we can actually see it, though. Yes. Uh, well, right or Hainsburg. Pull that time back a little bit so we can see it. Uh, but before we finish, I'll go through some of Joe's answers to the questions that he, he gave. There you go, look, so you can see the uh, narrow gauge coaches sitting down on the narrow gauge track. Um, I can't unfortunately fly because I'm not in a train but there is a uh, you can see that it is if I come over here hopefully you can see it is actually narrow gauge track um, and uh, little narrow gauge coaches sitting on there just makes this area uh, 
a little bit more interesting. In reality, there'd be lovely steam engines down there and all sorts of things, but uh, it, the actual trains are over here and there's freight stuff going on over on the other side of it with the narrow gauge in the middle. And if I remember rightly, this is a terminus for the narrow gauge, which then proceeds off here and it runs for blooming miles down there. It's enormous. Um, so... Can we walk down there, or is it? No, uh, you can't walk down there. No. no. No, that's not a walkable area, I'm afraid. So you just have to you look, but you can't touch. You can look, but not touch, absolutely. Well, that's the thing. We haven't properly... These are, Those coaches are not real. They're just scenery. Um, and if we let you walk down there, they need to become more real, which means there's a lot more effort needed to be for something which is um, just scenery. So... Um, Doing it like this, it meant it was actually easy to put those uh, those coaches in. So someone asked whether or not they might appear on um, the other route, and I'm not going to make any promises, but possibly it's probably not that hard to do because there, there is the narrow gauge section on Dresden Risa, of which this is no relation. There's just a lot of narrow gauge in this part of the world, as there should be. Narrow gauge is amazing. Right, let me pop up here. Right, is there anything else you wanted to look at? I think just the recap of the... Oh, yeah. yeah oh, I was going to go through Joe's questions. Uh, or, yes. sorry, the questions Joe picked up out of the uh, the forum. So, uh, what changes have been made around Dresden? So, from the, as far as the timetable was concerned, uh, AI services RE15 and R18 run direct to Coswick instead of via Dresden Mitter. RE1 and RE2 service, uh, services are present with BR612 and S1 services use BR182s if owned. I don't know if that's actually still true, Joe. Is that, are you sure? Um, how many services? Uh, playable 200, including AI, uh, just over a 1,000. Um, what does the AI in Dresden and Chemnitz consist of? Dresden AI is RB31, RE1, RE2, RE15, RE18, RE50, S1, S2, IC, ICE, EC, and CNL. Uh, Chemnitz is RB30, RB45, RE1, and RE6. Layers, so there's the base layer. Um, uh, so there's a Dresden AI layer, which has the uh, BR442 AI around Dresden. There's the uh, IC AI layer, which is the BR101 AI around Dresden. The EC AI layer, uh, layer which has the BR101 and the BR182 AI around Dresden. And the ICE layer, uh, I, again, AI. So this is all AI layers, and they're all only on Gen 9 and PC. Um, and um, so those are there uh, on Gen 9 and PC. Uh, all of the playable stuff is um, is in the base, though, so it should be good. Yes, a train. Um, what else have we got here? Substitution. All four BR143 Dosto S3 formations each have a 10% chance of spawning as a BR442. Um, uh, the S3 had one in operation in 2012, so if you've got Dresden, then uh, 442s might appear as playable trains. Um, Electric freight locos have been set up to spawn as any other freight loco that exists in TSW. The shunters have been set up to sub in all German shunters in TSW. So that's the 363s, the 204 and the G6. Um, AIS-1 run the BR-143 by default and have a chance of spawning the BR-182 if owned. Um, what unique service patterns are there? Freight is all unique. Uh, this is not a main freight route. Uh, additionally, there are EC loco swaps going on at Dresden, so where the 182 and the 101 will do a, a loco swap. Um, we'll show that at the on the next one, because I haven't got any of that stock installed, so I'll show that on hopefully on the release stream. Uh, are off-world destinations set up properly? Yes, including all stations to the final stop. Uh, this will not work over on trains with older PIS systems and might be limited on trains without PIS. Uh, will the setup time allow time to set up everything properly? Setup time is two minutes, which is more than enough time to get yourself set up. Uh, and what services are present? So all services except BR642, because we haven't got a BR642 or something appropriate. And that was that was it. Joe took the time to go through the questions that were on the forum, and so I wanted to just run through those and, and get you those answers. Thank you very much, Joe. Appreciate it. And uh, I think I found what your telephone voice is, Matt. Really? Sounded very, very uh, measured, very, very uh, authoritative. My, my VO uh, voice. <laughs> your VO voice, yeah. Uh, okay, I think we should call it there for an evening. Uh, so end there with much. this lovely pink jacket. 
Oh, of course, of course. You 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 sort that out, didn't you? Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, Matt, do you want to chuck us back on face cams just to finish? Yep. There we go. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, we will be doing another one of these streams next week. Uh, so we'll be doing a launch stream because, of course, we are launching on next Thursday, the 13th <laughs> of January. Uh, Pre-order and wish listing is available on Steam. I don't think it is currently on other platforms, um, but the usual times that the content will be going out will, will apply. Um, I can't give you exact times, but there, there will be at some point during that day and not dissimilar to what time you'd normally expect um and if you want to get a little bit more information we've just put an article up on uh dovetail live so head on to our website for full details and there's a link to the steam page as well 10 percent discount pre-order um, that does that link does work i think if you're searching for it in steam at the moment it doesn't show up so if you need the direct link um all that remains is to be so thank you for everybody who submitted questions as well we hope we managed to answer as many of them as we could do if there is anything you would like us to see or we haven't shown tonight please comment on that thread and we will try and get it done in the launch stream next mm -hmm. week uh thanks very much matt for joining us thanks for driving thanks for keeping concentrated and not only getting uh pinged once i was testing uh, it was for demonstration <laughs> purposes of course uh, uh yeah thanks matt and uh i assume you will be back for the launch stream next week as well certainly will brilliant okay uh thank you very much everybody have a lovely evening uh what's left of it anyway wherever you are uh and we will see you uh, again sometime soon all right cheers everyone bye bye, -bye.